Hello friends, hope everybody's doing well. Okay, so today we're going to do a safety check on the tag along trailer here. Um, we're going to begin by... Um, I'm going to hook up the wiring harness here and we're going to make sure that the tail lights work, the parking lights, the directionals, and the brake lights. But on this truck here, if you look here, this has a separate turn signal. Uh, from the other light here and like Toyota's Nissan some of some of the foreign vehicles ha had this uh, situation here with the separate turn signal and the turn signal just works the turn signal and that's it on this so what this has is <clears throat> it has a converter box where this harness is it runs into the truck and then it has a converter box that hooks into all the uh, wiring for the parking lights, stop lights, directionals, and so on. Now, um, <clears throat> on my work truck over there, that came with the trailer package, which means it came with the trailer hitch, the wiring harness already installed and everything like that. This truck didn't. I went out and bought a direct fit trailer hitch for it, and then I had to buy that converter box for it. If you don't use the converter box, then the lights aren't going to work properly. Now, on the other truck, one year, it was only, always usually the uh, bulb in the tail lights or, or the socket would rot out or whatever. Um, over the years, I even tried uh, marine lights. They were they're for boat trailers, and they were made to submerge into... Uh, salt water which we don't do that well we go out you know on salt salt covered roads when it snows and stuff but it turned out that even the marine lights that i had on here ended up being uh i'm gonna take a walk back there a minute ended up rotting out the sockets and everything it was unbelievable and i don't even like i said i don't even back this thing into the ocean then they came out with led lights right Ever since I put these LED lights on, I never had a problem ever again. And I think I put these on about four or five years ago. Every so often I have problems with the wiring now. Um, if you're going to repair a wire or replace a piece, you really want to solder the wire. And then what you want to do is you want to slip on some of that shrink wrap and Make sure you, you slip the shrink wrap, wrap on it first before you um, solder the wire. Otherwise, you won't be able to get the shrink, shrink wrap on it. And then you, you slide it over and you can use either a heat gun. I have a blow dryer that I can use. And, you know, you just uh, hit the shrink wrap with the blower, hair dryer, uh, heat gun, whatever. And then it'll just shrink it on there so no moisture or anything gets in there now you can use solderless connectors too if you you can't um if you're not equipped to solder or you don't know how to solder and i'm not that great at soldering so i use the wireless uh connectors solderless not wireless <laughs> solderless connectors now they make a shrink shrink wrap for that too that'll fit over the um solderless connector it's like a little wider because it take you know you're gonna need something a little bit bigger to fit over the uh, solderless connector and then you can heat it up and do it the same way um, what I normally do is I use the uh, solderless connectors but I use electrical tape the best electrical tape I could uh, suggest to use is the 3M works the best but even though I uh, tape the wires up somehow the corrosion still gets in there and it breaks the wire apart from the uh, connector itself so on the other truck I was telling you I had a problem to where I don't think any of the uh, brake lights worked on the trailer so what I did was if you look here there's like a, a straight prong that comes out that's the ground there's a white wire that goes into that that's the ground okay and then that ground wire comes up here and it goes to the trailer a frame here so if 
you uh, hook this up, the ground side, and take the test light, you can test, you can turn the parking lights on, see if you have juice. I use a pry bar to push the pedal down, because I'm always alone, to see if the brake lights work. So I use the pry bar, I push the uh, brake pedal down, and I had no juice. So I turned the parking lights on to make sure there was nothing up with the uh, test light here and it lit up so I said to myself well must be the converter box in there so I went and bought a converter box for it and I have a video and I just looked back on it today before I started making this video it looks like two years ago I made that video of installing the uh, converter box in here and I'll leave a link to that it's only about six minutes long because I couldn't film the whole, whole thing because it took me like two hours to do it. But I do explain what wire went where and everything like that. Even on a converter box, it tells you, um, yeah, it's printed right on the converter box which wire goes to where, brake lights, sparking lights, directionals, so on. Um, the thing was, all the wiring in this truck was a different color from the, where the converter box came off. So I had to use a test light um, when I was installing this thing to see what wire lit up the parking lights, what wire lit up the uh, turn signal lights, and so on and so, so forth. But I'll, I'll leave a link to that video. It's not one of my better videos, but you'll get the uh, gist of what I had to do on that. Um, also, what we're going to do is, well, before that, some of you that follow me, I had a big problem last year. I had the Gravely on the trailer here, and I hit a pretty hard bump. And what happened was, this A-frame here bent up. And the reason for that is, you see the weld here? That's holding pretty good so far. But where the A-frame went to the other beam back here, rotted away. Rotted right off the beam. So when I hit the bump, this A-frame bent straight up, you know, pretty far up. So I called the welder up, and some of, you, some of you that follow me know the whole story with that. The welder, yeah, tomorrow, next week, blah, 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 blah. And then we were getting a snowstorm within days, and I took it upon myself to just fix it myself. I just went to uh, Lowe's, and then I bought some angle iron here, and I don't weld, but I bolted it on here. It's just a Band-Aid on here. I, I don't know. And then... I ran it back here and you can see what I did here. I mean, it's a band-aid. This trailer here is about 23 years old this year. I'm not going to sell it to anybody because I don't want anybody getting hurt with this thing or something, you know, bad happening. What I'll do with this trailer is I'll probably just cut it up and junk it and just I'll, I'll just cut it into pieces and scrap it. Um, there's another problem um, trying to find a trailer. Used trailers, I, I looked up used trailers and this size trailer, I used ones like eight or 900 bucks, sometimes a thousand bucks. I paid 14, I think 12 to $1,400 for this brand new. I always like buying brand new trailers because then otherwise you're getting somebody else's headaches and stuff like that. So. I couldn't find the trailer, so I'm gonna have to use this one. And I'm kind of worried here, where the hub goes on here, the leaf spray, it's all rotted out under there. So the next thing we're gonna do here is, we're gonna check the bearings on this. I usually like to, uh, since I only use this in the winter, mostly, uh, when I was doing lawn care, when I first got this trailer, I was using it a lot. So what I would do is, once a year, in the springtime usually, I would pull it apart, repack the uh, wheel bearings, put new grease seals in, new cotter pins, and so on. Um, I haven't done it on this trailer for about the last three or four years. I haven't checked anything as far as that goes. And what I'll do is, first I'm going to uh, show you, if you go out and buy, you want to buy a trailer, I'm going to show you how to check the trailer out. Uh, you're going to want to jack, jack it up, and then I'll show you. You know, spin the tire. You, you can hear, if it doesn't turn smooth then you got like a bearing issue um, 
if you don't take care of your trailer, what happens eventual, eventually is the grease runs out. Yeah, there's no grease packed in there. The bearing, and what happens is the bearings get so hot uh, that the inner part of the bearing actually welds itself to the spindle. And I've had that happen. Um, I've had, not to me, but I've seen it happen. And I had to do repairs when I was uh, fixing cars. And <clears throat> I would cut the... Uh, piece of bearing off the spindle save the customer getting a brand new spindle sometimes there's a pain you know it's just a big pain in the neck and then you got to make sure the spindle's good and you got to fit the new bearing on there and make sure it fits back on there good but um i'm not going to show you what i'm going to do is i'm going to put you on pause and we're going to go over the lights here and make sure they work and see if they work this year so i'll be back to you in a minute or so Okay, so I put a pry bar on the brake pedal there, and I just push the seat up, so the pry bar will push the uh, brake pedal down. So we have the right side works. The left side works. Okay, now I'm gonna go over and set the uh, brake lights off, and we'll turn the parking lights on. Okay, so to kill two birds with one stone, I put the four-way flashers on instead of doing one directional left and right at a time. So I put the four-ways on. So we got the right side and we have the left side here. So by some miracle, the lights are good. But like I said, normally the problems that I always had was, you know, the bulb, the corrosion inside the bulb socket. That was most of the problem all the time here. But, okay, so, it'll be, like I said, about two minutes for you. Tomorrow morning, I think the rain's gonna hold off till the afternoon. I'll do one side with you with the bearings. I'm not gonna go too crazy with this thing. I'm not buying new seals for it or anything for it. What I wanna do is make sure there's grease in here because this trailer's really on borrowed time now. So, I'll see you guys then. So, before we get to the hub bearings, there's a few things I want to explain to you. Okay, so we talked about that um, trailer light converter box. If you buy that uh, converter box, it comes with the wiring uh, diagram, which is color-coded also. Or if you buy any other, um, like the trailer wire harness to the tail lights, if you buy the tail lights, it will also come with the, um, the uh, what do you call it, the uh, wiring diagram. So you always want to hang on to a copy of that. This way, it makes it easier to diagnose everything. Okay, so here we have the, uh, the clasp here for the uh, tongue and ball here. And what you do is you lift this all the way up. You insert this. A frame onto the ball and then you pull this back down sometimes you got to back the trailer up a little bit so that the ball catches so this uh, a frame catches on the ball and you have to pull it back a little bit on the ball in order to uh, clip this down and then once you clip this down it has a pin it's a safety pin that goes through the uh, mechanism here and it keeps this from lifting so if you hit a big bump or something on the road you don't have to worry about this lifting up and the a-frame coming off the ball here um, if you don't have that pin which I don't anymore God knows what happened over the years to that you can use a quarter inch nut and bolt you know just get a long enough uh, bolt and then you can put a nut on here and just tighten it up on there. Um, also, you have the safety chains to come off the trailer A-frame here to go to the trailer hitch. Okay, so you always want to make sure you hook the chains up. But you don't want to hook the chains up like the right side straight. You want to crisscross the chains before you lat latch it to the, uh, the trailer hitch. Um, that's about it for that. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, bearings here Okay, so what you want to do is if you're buying the used trailer 
always ask the seller if it's okay to check out the trailer before you buy it. If the uh, seller says no to you, just kindly say thanks anyway and walk away. That means he's trying to hide something. So if the seller says, yeah, go ahead, do what you got to do. All right, so what you want to do is you want to bring like a floor jack. We're using our trusty Harbor Freight floor jack today. Okay, so what you want to do is bring a floor jack with you. And what you're going to do is you're going to jack the uh, trailer up by the leaf spring underneath here. And what you want to do is you want to give the wheel a good shake. But that doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean anything because it has... Um, a nut that holds the hub on and the bearing assembly on. Sometimes um, they're not tight enough and then you'll have a little play back and forth here which is okay. Okay so what you want to do is give the wheel a spin after you jack it up. Okay so the wheel spins easy and we're not hearing anything. We're not hearing any vibration or anything like that. If you hear any vibration uh, chances are the bearings are no good so you know jack the one side up then go around jack the other side up and do this test and it should spin free if there's any if you shake this and it's a little loose like I was talking about before and that nuts a little loose but you still have a lot of drag okay then you have something going on with the bearings so you would need to replace the uh, wheel bearings inner and outer and grease seals and cotter pins okay so as far as servicing the hub uh, never use the same cotter pins again um, always get new ones and also the grease seals um, replace those two if you're going to service the hub um, okay so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take the wheel off these lug nuts on here happen to be 13 16 socket you would need but I'm going to be using a 21 millimeter that fits on there just fine. Um, if you don't have, if you don't have a, an impact gun, and you're going to be doing it by hand, before you jack it up, loosen all the lug nuts up first, and then jack it up, and then you can wheel the uh, lug nuts off. All right, so I'm going to get on with uh, pulling a wheel off, and then I'll show you the rest. Okay, so, the best way to do this is, if you don't have a dust cap remover, it's always a good idea to go to either Harbor Freight or any store that sells tools and buy a dust cap remover. What it has is, I'm just throwing my gloves on, what it has is two claws here and you squeeze it in between here, in between the lip and the hub. And then you could just wiggle this off. Since I didn't have that, what I did was I just stuck the screwdriver in here. And I just lightly tapped around where this ridge is here on the dust cap and against the uh, hub. And just tapped it a little bit. You don't want to tap it too hard. You don't want the screwdriver to go through the uh, dust cap here. So what I'm going to do now, since I got it started, I could just work my way around here and pop the dust cap off. Okay. Sometimes you'll have it where this dust cap doesn't fit fit on there good. And what I normally do is uh, you could take channel lock pliers and just squeeze it ever so slightly just to oblong this a little bit and then it'll fit back on there correctly okay so next we're going to use our cutting pliers you know I can still hardly see here <laughs> and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get this uh, cotter pin out here if I can And I might have to come back to you on that. Because I, I can't see what I'm doing here too well. So, alright, let me shut the camera off and I'll be right back to you. This thing's not being able to see good. Uh, 
All right, so I'll be back to you as soon as I get that sorted there. Okay, so I shouldn't have gave up on camera so fast. I was able to uh, bend part of the cotter pin down and I can uh, now take the cotter pin out of the hole there. Sorry it's taking so long, I gotta get my gloves back on. See, let me make sure you're, you can see what's going on, yeah you can. Alright, so I bent the piece that you bend over here to hold the cotter pin in. And now we're just going to take the cutting pliers here. And we're just going to slide this out here. Okay, so another thing I'm going to show you right now is when you put the bearing on, what you want to do is you want to snug the bearing up. And you just, you don't want to tighten it. You don't go crazy with this. Because if you do, if you over tighten this nut, you're going to burn up the bearing in there. Okay? And I'm going to show you another thing not to do. This is from mechanics that I worked with used to do this. Because some brake rotors are, have the same bearing uh, set up as this. And here's what they used to do. They used to take the nut off. Take the thrust washer off. Right? This is the thrust washer here. You always want to make sure you have a thrust washer. This is the outer bearing here. So what they used to do is, they used to take the thrust washer off, take the bearing out. Right? Then they used to screw the uh, nut back on here. I don't know if you could even possibly do it on this one. Yeah, you can. And what they used to do is put the nut on there and ram this uh, hub off, which means you're putting pressure on the inner bearing, and that's to knock the seal off. Don't ever do that that way. Just take the hub off and put it on the bench and either use a pry bar or something to get the seal out. Um, all right, so to get the parts for this, if you take the seal with you, or even the whole hub with you, and if you need bearings or the seal, you can either take the whole thing with you to the uh, trailer dealer, and they have a parts department there, and you can um, match up seals and everything like that, so that's no problem at all. I suppose if you have the registration of the, of the make of the trailer and everything, you could probably do it that way too, but I'm not quite sure there. So, we see here that the seal should actually be replaced, but there's plenty of grease in there. So what I'm going to do is, since we're not going too crazy with this trailer, because I don't know what the uh, story is going to be with this, sooner or later i got to replace this trailer. So I'm just, just going to take wheel bearing grease and just pack grease in there. And since we didn't hear any vibration noise when we were spinning the wheel, it looks to me like this, uh, this, um, the bearings are fine. So, what you could do is, to get the seal out, sometimes you can stick a pry bar in here and just start hitting the pry bar with a hammer and then the seal will pop out for you. But ne never bang on the bearing, though, to get the seal out. And especially do it the way I just showed you, like some mechanic stuff. Um, yeah, that's not a good idea. But, um, I think we're just going to wrap this up right now because all I have to do now is I'm going to stick some grease in the hub and I'm going to put it back together. I have a couple of new cotter pins on standby here that I'll be using. Like I said, don't ever use the cotter pins over again. Not a good idea. And you want to do this periodically. Um, when I used to use this trailer when I had my lawn service business, I used it a lot, so I think I already explained to you, I used to do it every spring. Now it only goes out in the winter, and sometimes when we buy Gravely projects in the summer, I'll take it out a few times, and that's it. So, I hope uh, this helps somebody out. 
someday. Um, I guess that's about all I got to say about this. So, um, I'm just taking my gloves off so I could close out here. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. I want to thank everybody over the year of 2022 for your support, for subscribing, for viewing, all of you. Thank you. I appreciate you all. all. The channel had a pretty decent year, I would say, this year. And I hope 2023 brings us uh, good luck and healthiness. And thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And take care. Two things I forgot to tell you. We put a dust cap on. You see there's a lip on the uh, on the dust cap here. I mean, you can get it started just a little bit. Very light taps around here to get it started. But you want to bring it home with your screwdriver. Don't bang against the cat because you'll bend the cat. And also, uh, if you're going to repack the bearings, make sure you take all the old grease out and try to clean the bearings out the best you can. I'm going to try to explain. Um, what you're going to do is take a wad of grease and stick it in your hand. Wear gloves. And stick it in your hand. And when you take the bearing, the outer part and the inner part, just keep on working the bearing through. And then you'll see the uh, grease come through the inner part and the outer part of the bearing. And as soon as you see that happening, that means you've greased the bearing good. And then... Um, Fill the inside of the hub with grease, pack it in there, and then you could, the excess grease after you, you uh, put the hub on it, after you've installed the uh, inner bearing and the seal, when you put the hub on, you're going to get grease that comes out here. Just stick the bearing on, wipe the excess grease, and you can stick it right in the dust cap too, but very important, make sure you don't bend the dust cap when you're putting it on and just hit it like I told you to hit it. That's all.